Welcome to The Warp, I'm Jack Rita, and in this video I'm going to be talking about hazards. Uh, specifically, the hazard deck that comes with Cosmic Odyssey, the new expansion for Cosmic from Fantasy Flight, of which I'm the designer. Uh, but I'm going to talk about hazards in general as well. Hazards actually started off as a, a home brew variant from, I believe, Matt Stone back in the 90s, and maybe even predated that, but back around in the Mayfair days is when I became aware of the hazard deck concept. And for it, you could simply use a regular deck of cards, and there was a list of effects that matched the different cards. So a jack of diamonds would do this, and a three of spades would do that. And you could look those up. And a lot of the effects were kind of over the top. Uh, and, and a hazard deck was essentially an event deck. So you would have these events. And the way that the original rules worked were you would do it at the start of your turn. So after you draw your new hand, you would draw a hazard, and that hazard uh, could affect both encounters on your turn. It might affect only one of them. It might have no effect at all, but usually it did have some kind of effect. Uh, a lot of them were just, this happens to you, so sorry. <laughs> good, good luck with that. Um, I loved the idea of a hazard deck. I thought it was great and innovative, so I made my own. I didn't want to have to refer to a list, so I actually printed out a set of cards um, that had the effects on them. And I wanted to make my hazard deck a little bit different. So one of the things was I wanted to have some agency for the players, uh, whether or not they were going to deal with it. Because the original one is just, here it is, it's going to happen to you. Um, so the way I did it was, if you were going to have a second encounter on your turn, then you had to draw from the hazard deck. So normally on your counter, if you have your first encounter, you either win or you make a deal. You may choose to have a second encounter, as long as you have an encounter card with which to start. Uh, but... With my hazard deck in play, if you were going to have that second encounter, first you would draw a hazard and you would have to deal with the consequences. And I tried to make more of my hazards um, choices that the offense would make or some of the other players as well. And a lot of if-thens. If this happens, then that will occur. Uh, if you do this, then here's what's going to be different about the encounter. So I tried to do that. Um, rather than just pure events, because this was, again, during the Mayfair days, and Mayfair added something to their Destiny deck called Comets, and Comets were very much like events, um, or they could be things that would change the encounter. So this one was called Rewards Battle. Uh, no player can win a colony in this encounter. The winning main player and winning allies all get rewards um, of ships out of the warp or cards from the deck instead. Um, another one, this one's called An Odd Way to Win a War, and that might sound familiar to some of you. Uh, if only one of the two main players plays an odd attack card, that player wins the encounter, otherwise determine the winner normally. Um, because that is actually one of the hazards in the original hazard deck for the Fantasy Fight Edition in Cosmic Conflict. Odd Way to Win a War. So it was one of the things that Kevin um, looked at uh, in terms of what to add to the Fantasy Flight Edition. Comets did not make the cut, but... Um, a couple of the effects uh, did find their way into the game. And the way that, that Kevin changed hazards was um, having it tied to the Destiny deck. So one out of every three Destiny cards of a player color had a hazard warning. So that was introduced right in the base set, even though hazards didn't come out until the second expansion. Um, there was a little rule in the rule book that says, here, this is a hazard warning, don't worry about it, that's coming later. Um, I thought that was an interesting idea. I did like that that was an innovative new approach for it. Um, but after 10 years or so of having hazards in the Fantasy Flight Edition, I think that ultimately I still prefer my approach to the hazard implementation in just in, in, in so far as it's the second encounter on your turn that drives it. And I did introduce uh, just a minor little rule into the Cosmic Odyssey edition. It's called Procedural Change. It's basically just a variant now, so at least other people know about it. Um, there are some ways for the uh, procedural change to officially be uh, adopted into a game. There is not a hazard that does it, although there was in the design process. It didn't make the cut, but... Um, you have ways you can do it, and you can just choose to do it if you want, if you want to play it that way. So we like to give the players the, the options. I actually also, back in the, uh, I've printed my own copy of Cosmic Encounter uh, numerous times, and one of the times it has more of a Fantasy Flight look um, on poker size cards rather than a bridge size. 
Uh, but I did divide it up into you have red hazards and yellow hazards. And you knew, again, I was still using my my rule of if you're going to have a second encounter, you're going to draw. But you would know um, if I do have a second encounter, I'm going to deal with a red hazard. And those are more powerful effects. So this one is called Better Late Than Never. Both main players must play and reveal encounter cards before asking for allies. After all allies are committed, the encounter totals are calculated. Power effects that take place before the reveal, reveal phase may still be invoked. So that's kind of a doozy. Um, whereas a yellow hazard effect, like reverse rewards, which happens to be one of the ones from the game. So it just switches what allies get, defensive allies land on the planet. If their side wins, offensive allies get rewards instead. So I liked how Kevin introduced some of that stuff in there. My only real gripe, I would say, with the hazard deck that's in Cosmic Conflict was I wish there had been more variety. So he had, you know, three copies of Temporal Anomaly, which uh, changes the direction of play. Um, I think two would have been more than enough. You'd have one would come up and now you're going in counterclockwise order. And maybe if you play the game long enough, it'll switch back. I did have that happen to me one time playing with Jefferson Crow, uh, Crow in San Francisco. Um, it was at least a six-player game. may have been more than that. There were a lot of players, and I remember that I was going to go last in the turn order. And right before my turn came up, a hazard for Temporal Anomaly switched play. And right about when it was going to come up again, another one came up. So I never did get a turn in that game, although my recollection is I still won that game. But... Uh, I could be wrong, um, but I do like the, a lot of the other effects in the game. Something that I do also enjoy a lot in the original Hazard deck um, were the This Card Remains in Play cards. So there's a lot of those that are really interesting, and I especially love the three uh, wise men, the Cosmic Guardian, the Entropy Beast, and the Witness, um, and the, each one of them dismisses the other. Otherwise, a uh, This Card Remains in Play rule uh, remains in play unless something specifically calls for it to be removed. So I, I enjoy that. So in designing the hazards for Cosmic Odyssey, uh, I looked at, again, with everything, all the variants, I looked at what were things that people liked about the, the previous version of that variant and what were the criticisms. And, you know, hazards are a mixed bag for a lot of players. Some people are like, oh yeah, we use them all the time. It's it's not that intrusive since it's only, you know, at most one out of every three encounters because none of the wilds or special destinies have hazard warnings. So it's really not coming up quite as often. Uh, and many of the effects are relatively mild, like a reverse reward since there's three of them in there. There's always a good chance you're going to get one of those or some of the other events. Um, so having the procedural change was one way that you could play around with that if you wanted it to happen more often, um, but have some control over it. Um, but I, I, the big thing for me was just a more diverse effect. So there's not, um, there's not duplicates of any of the effects here in the, the, the Odyssey hazard deck, um, unless I've missed my count. And, um, there's no, uh, there's none of the permanent ones, but we have introduced some that are semi-permanent. Um, and these, uh, these are, these will come up and they'll stay around. Uh, but the rule is that if another semi-permanent, or if you are combining them, another permanent hazard is drawn, then the semi-permanent one is dismissed. So that those are dismissed by any other hazard card that is drawn that is going to stick around for more than one encounter. Um, and, and a lot of the effects, I think, are just a little more interesting and unusual. Um, the other thing that we introduced in this one were, was a concept that... Um, that was also a variant that uh, came out in the in between the Mayfair and Fantasy Flight uh, days, and uh, it's it's what we now call an alt hazard. So this is a hazard that actually cr creates an opportunity for the offense to forego a normal encounter in in order to get some other kind of benefit, perk, or reward. Um, so here's an example of one. This one's called Peace Dividend. Um, the offense gains two rewards for each planet that they occupy with another player. And then the encounter ends successfully. Um, now, the interesting thing about these is if the offense chooses to do this, then there's often a secondary effect for the other players. So if the offense does take the peace dividend, then the other players, if you occupy at least one planet with the offense, you gain two rewards. 
So the offense knows, they know that they're, they're going to get something, and what they get is usually better than what everyone else gets, but they are letting everyone else get something as well. Uh, I'll give you another example of an alt hazard here. Um, this one's called strip mining. And the way this works is the offense for each ship that you have on a foreign colony, draw one card, the counter ends successfully. Others, if you occupy a planet with the offense, draw one card. So very similar to the other one. Uh, this one's called new recruits. Um, free all of your ships from the warp and place them on your home colonies. The encounter immediately ends successfully. And the other players free one of your ships from the warp and place it on one of your home colonies. Um, universe merge. This one, the offense, draw a random unused alien sheet and place it face up in front of you. If it has game setup text or is otherwise not allowed, uh, you know, draw again. If you have this alien's power in addition to your own, the encounter ends successfully. That's pretty good. And everyone else gets to draw two flares from the flare deck. So that is um, an interesting, I think, alternative um, for the offense to consider. They can always just say no and um, ignore it. So they don't. They can just have a normal encounter. They don't have to do that. Um, but in the mid to late game, a lot of times where you're like, oh, you know what? Maybe what I'll do because because you know you know where you're going to be having your encounter because the hazard rules still they work after destiny so you know the destiny um, and you, you even go through the whole launch process uh, but then you can end the encounter with the alt hazard so some of the effects um, you know for me it's hard to get used to the idea of you're not drawing the hazard until right before alliances. Um, cause a lot of times we just forget, like, oh yeah, I forgot a hazard warning came up. Um, so we actually, we sort of home rule it that once we draw the, the destiny card with the hazard warning, we have the hazard right then. Um, and you know, if it's something that's like, oh, this is going to have a weird effect, which is not pretty common, we just adjust. So, um, you play it however you want to play it, play it the right way, I guess the right way. Um, that's up to you. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I, I enjoy hazards. I like the idea of the of the different events. I like some of the other um, elements. So here's some of the examples of the of the new hazards that are in Odyssey. This one's called uh, Warp Research. Um, if the offense wins this encounter, they may free all of their ships from the warp. If the defense wins, all players except the offense may free all of their ships from the warp. So the the choice here is not so much for the offense. It's really um, for the allies, although it will uh, affect alliance invitations. So if you're the offense, the you know that the other players are incentivized to ally with the defense. Uh, and maybe you were not planning to uh, invite anybody along anyway, but the prospect of having to fl face all of the other players might be uh, something that changes your mind about who you're going to invite. So I like that. Um, this one is called Confined Launches. So each player that sends ships into this encounter can only send ships from one planet in their home system. Um, so yeah, if you if you only have one ship on, on a home colony, all your home colonies, if you're going to join this encounter, you're vacating a planet. Or usually what's going to happen is you you maybe have got a planet with two or three ships, uh, depending on how early in the game that hazard comes up you may only be able to commit uh, very small numbers, whereas maybe one player can be like, oh yeah, I can send three or four ships. Maybe I've got more than four ships on there, or I don't mind stripping off that planet completely and uh, and going for it. Um, so that is, that's what uh, you get in here. There's not quite as many hazards in the Odyssey deck as there are in the one from Incursion. Um, but there's still plenty. Like I said, you're not going to come up very often. I did uh, include uh, eight replacement Destiny cards in Odyssey that have a much more obvious hazard warning. The, the real legitimate criticism about the hazard warnings um, from the base set on those Destiny cards is you can barely see them. Uh, and we've tried over the years to have more and more effects that trigger off of a hazard warning so that you're paying more attention to that as you're drawing Destiny, um, but it's still easy to miss. It's much harder to miss now because it's got it's got the big hazard things in the corner and it says Hazard Destiny right at the top on there. So if you still miss it, then uh, maybe that's you and has nothing to do with the cards. 
Um, but yeah, ultimately, like with the other variants, um, these two decks are designed to be combined. And so I think that makes for a much more interesting hazard deck overall, uh, no matter which of the variants that you're using. And um, so, yeah, I, I'm pleased with it. Let me know what you think of the, of the new hazards that are in Odyssey, if you've had a chance to look at them and hopefully to play with them. Um, are you combining them with the original? Do you prefer one deck over the other? Let me know uh, your whys and hows. If you've created your own custom hazards, let me know. I've got a lot of extra hazards in my tabletop simulator uh, version of Cosmic Encounter, including a PRA um, hazard and, uh, and a TARDIS hazard, which um, stick around. So um, yeah, those are, those are interesting. Um, happy to show those to somebody sometime if they want to join us for some Cosmic in Tabletop Simulator. Uh, that's it for today. So thanks for watching and we'll see you again soon.